had a big uh, uh, sort of initial success in my film career, which sort of fizzled after about a year and a half because none of the movies I made had done any made any money. I was grateful just to pay my rent for a few months. I had no idea it was going to turn into. I, and I thought it was kind of a, a strange uh, choice given my background. But I said, well, it's a go- it's a job like any other, and I'm going to do it. You know, I did every little acting procedure I would for if I was playing Shakespeare in my head because I I had a, a real sense of obligation to. Because it was a, it was a stretch from who I was, how old I was, <laughs> and uh, and everything, and so we just did it. I just try to do do it as well as I can. I've been doing it long enough that there is a certain technique which develops over the years. The way I've been doing anything, a, a shorthand I have with my own unconsciousness, if you will. And also, if you're film acting, some of it has to happen right that second. You don't get another shot at it, yeah. and so it's luck. You know, and there's the luck of the actual enterprise in which you're engaged. If it's going to be successful, because if it's successful, you'll get a chance to do more of it. But if it's not, it can be. There's some things. The best work I've ever, some of the best work I've ever done has been a very obscure endeavors that didn't, you know, break through that membrane. Right. And uh, these days, especially, it's uh, it's really the luck of the draw whether you're going to. You know, breakthrough. I think it'd be wrong to sort of pigeonhole yourself as like an indie actor or, you know, a movie star or whatever. Um, I think one of the things that it was one of the best pieces of, of advice that someone gave me recently was that you should never do something for the reason, for, you should never do something because you should do it, if you know what I mean. You should only do something because you want to or because you feel like you need to. And so I think that's something because I've been the same as you, like very, very harsh critic on myself, really kind of beating myself up about certain things over the years. And also just knowing that you haven't stood up for yourself as much as you probably should. Um, And I've always had that in my head, like I should do this, I should do this. Not even just with work, but just in life, you know, it's something that I think you get over that with maturity and, and just realizing what's actually important. So that's something I've had to work on for sure. Because I've made mistakes before, I am. So, I have such a hard time forgiving myself that I get scared and then I lock up. I'm like, well, maybe I shouldn't do this because as time has gone on, I've gotten uh, more excited to play people that are unlike me or that are where I need to go into different worlds because I've been, I felt so for so long just in my own experience. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I understood how to play. But now that I am able to, to see how rewarding it is to, to lose yourself in someone else's experience, to to find these people that are nothing like you and and let their um, traits infuse your life. I mean, like playing Billie Jean has truly changed my life. She's infused so much into my spirit. I mean, there was a shift that was happening a couple of years ago. Maybe it's just maturity or whatever my path is as an actor and as a human, as a woman. Um, but it it became something that I really wanted to, to expand into because for a long time I was playing d- different versions of, of myself. As time has gone on, it's become so in- incredibly rewarding to take risks, to dare, to be, not be afraid to make mistakes because that's just been, you know, as a, as a, the most anxious kid you've ever met. I, in my whole life has been defined by, please don't mess up, I can't mess up, no. <sighs> you know, and that's changing, which is incredible. Well, um, of course, I, I needed an acting coach. Yep. She was like, this is what you do. She didn't baby me, she's baby me. She said, you take all of that shit <laughs> and you put it, you give it to Florence. Mm-hmm. And I was so like, oh no, hug me, do something. <laughs> and I had to pull myself together and just give everything to Florence. So that's that was the first thing I said to her, like, help me, I'm going through mm-hmm. it. And she said, forget it, give it to Florence. Al Pacino told me, that was my, he, he directed my first film. And he said that it just... For film, it has to be real. So whatever you are feeling, the camera is an extension. It, it can see more into you than your scene partner. It's and so to to look at it not like it's a separate thing, but it's part of your body almost. It has a direct link to your soul. So what are you? Whatever you're feeling, you can try to hide it, but the camera is going to get it. So this the sense of once you allow that and allow yourself to hide a little bit if you want but it's still going to see it anyway and as re- whatever you are feeling that's what the character's feeling and it just it was i was so lucky that that was my first mm-hmm. film because i was afraid to go from the i started in theater and i was afraid to go from theater to film because i didn't i thought there was going to be a big difference in the acting and that advice changed everything for me well the first things i think of are the things i was resistant to in acting school and the number 
One thing was that the way I talked, I come from the south side of Chicago. I used to have a really Chicago accent, like, oh my God, you guys, we gotta go down to the car and get some beers and blah, blah, you know, like this really heavy, but I didn't hear it, you know? And so I went to these voice and speech classes and they're like, you gotta standardize your speech, man. You, you sound like, like, I, what it, it feels like an, an attack on your identity. And it took me a second, you know, that I remember, I think it was my second year of acting school, they, they had us read like the Gettysburg Address at the beginning of the year on a cassette tape, and then not, and put it away, and then do this whole year of voice and speech, and at the end, listen back to that tape, and I was like, wow, it's a good thing I, I, I started to listen to this teacher, or else I'd be playing guys from the south side of Chicago my whole life, you know? So that kind of adaptability, that's one of the things I learned from acting school, and just an appreciation of theater history and like where, where we've come from, how we got here. Things like movement and movement to music, and uh, I even had a makeup class. Like I went to a conservatory. It was, it was really what I was craving through my whole life. You know, I'd done community theater and, uh, you know, theater at school, early musicals when I was growing up. Um, so I was really craving this all-in feeling. What we did, which was really interesting, and if there are any actors watching this, it's, it's a, really, a really good technique. Because we were all a little bit older than the characters we were playing, mm -hmm. we decided that as soon as we got our makeup on, we would call each other by our character's name. So it was an ongoing improv all day long which gave us the license to go back in time and be these teenagers and act goofy and s silly and you could flirt. And <laughs> so, so it was constant. So when the cameras started to roll, we were already way into what was, we were doing. And a great many of the cast members had been in either the Broadway production or one of the national companies, though it's a little different, the play version, mm -hmm. but they knew those characters inside and out and they had mined them for all the jokes and the fun stuff, which usually you don't get to do on a movie. Yeah. Maybe you have a week rehearsal. Mm -hmm. We had three weeks, plus they brought all these goodies to it. My thing is doing homework. Yeah, that's always been my thing. If I, if, I, if I work harder than anybody else, I might not be the most talented guy, but I feel if I work harder than anybody else, they can't, you know what I'm saying? They can't, they can't take that away from me. That's one thing I can control is uh, doing the research and I'm still I'm still like you know building my little utility belt you know what I'm saying of like you know of, 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 of tools like and, uh, and gadgets I always want to constantly evolve you know I always want to constantly grow I never want to get to a point where I feel like I got it figured out you know like I always want to like kind of like push myself to be better you know and, and do and do greater things um, no matter what it is I've always had a certain <laughs> pressure pressure on, on myself of, of wanting to just to be great you know, and do great things, and also help people, man. I'm, I'm really big in, in, in the next generation. I feel like that's the, that's the, that's the only way it's going to get better moving forward. You got to lead this world in a better place than it was when you came in. But I want to work on my dash. You know what I'm saying? I want to work on that, that time that I'm here. It's hard for me to encourage people to act because I know the stress and the uncertainty, and, and, and nothing's guaranteed. And it's such a, such a dice roll. You know, it's such a gamble. But you can never tell somebody not to follow their dreams. I start off with the negatives. Like, okay, I'm X, Y, and Z, this is what it is. You know, you, you might be on a 7-Eleven diet for a while and you might sleep out your car. I mean, I did it. You might go on, a, you know, 100 auditions and you might get two callbacks, you know, and you gotta have a thick skin. You know, it's a very shallow, very vain industry. You can be a great actor, great actor, have all the talent, but you might not be built for film. And that's a harsh reality that people don't, that people can't take. So if I lay out everything like that and people still wanna do it, then I'm like, okay, cool, let's go. You know, it's, it's easy to see the good stuff when it's successful, when it, when it happens the right way, you know, and like the, the, the reward, but very rarely people like really understand like the lows, you know, like the, how lonely this industry is too. You know how much you spend time you spend by yourself, and when things get bad, it's it's you know it's it's it could be a, a it could be a lonely place, man. And um, you got to be a certain type of person, I think, to kind of handle that. It's hard, man, because you know as an actor, you know you you know you know you can't you learn to have low expectations. You know what I'm saying? Even with auditions. I go on mm -hmm. audition, audition, I walk out, I throw my sides away, I say, over, it's done. It never existed. If, it's, mm -hmm. if, I, if it comes back around, cool. I, I, I'll reprint my sides. I always throw my sides away when I leave. Always. By the time I'm doing, I started going on auditions, I was really, like I figured out there was a logic uh, to acting. There is, there's a science to it. And, uh, and I had studied with like Stella Adler Mm -hmm. So it was serious, and starting with Stella Adler, that was really serious stuff, you know, you couldn't be late, you know, so I had to, I was doing everything, every class movement, voice, and all this stuff. 
So I was really into it. And, you know, so my first thing in a uh, movie was, it was big up. And then after that was, uh, I did a James Bond movie, mm -hmm. which was like, boy, I made it, I'm done. <laughs> and uh, it was great, great experience. But I, it didn't happen like that. You know, mm -hmm. I, went, I went maybe a year after that without working, going on auditions and, you know, mm -hmm. getting rejections here, you know, left and right, which is part of being an actor, the tough part of being an actor. Her teachings, unlike a lot of teachers, she had a real quantifiable technique. She had ways to look at a text, ways to think about a character, ways to give variety and impulse to your performance, ways to get in touch with your histrionic self. She had specific things for you to do. She used to say, kids, acting is doable. I learned very specific technique from her, and I didn't study with her until I was in my 30s, and I'd already had a lot of professional experience. So unlike some of the kids who were studying with her, I would hear her say things, and I would go, you know, oh my God, and the penny would be dropping because I had practical experience to reflect on. Uh, but she, she just was a, she would teach me principally that the theater is a heightened form, as I've spoken earlier. It's, it's condensed, it must be, have no, nothing extraneous in, in it. And she would teach me that the past of the character is what governs the present of the character. You have to really think about the background, the, the cultural milieu, the social milieu, the history that the text happens in. And you have to know about those things because they give birth to what you want to be doing. She was quite an intellectual, very, one of the most beautiful, glamorous women you ever wanted to meet in your life and a tremendous intellect at the same time. She had a huge influence on me and I strongly recommend her book, The Art of Acting, to anyone going into this field. It's lots of very doable things in it that can continue to guide uh, an actor forever. Don't yawn, darling. Don't yawn. If you're an actress, you will not get tired. If you're a pishika, you'll get tired. <laughs> Because you'll say, well, what is she saying? I don't understand half of what she's saying because I don't know. I only know me. <laughs> so anybody else doesn't interest you very much. Well, it so happens there is no you when you're an actor. You're only the character. Only. And if you give up that you, I shouldn't say that because I look as if there's a lot of me. <laughs> There is no me, believe me. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you now, I'd be the most ignorant person in the world if it wasn't for a character that I had to study. I know so much about Norway, I can't tell you. I know the whole thing about Norway. I think I'll just give this up and talk about Norway. I am Norwegian, you know. <laughs> Again, why do we laugh? We laugh when we recognize ourselves. You see, that the real communication of laughter is always in, in the revelation of my God, that's what I do, you know? By the way, drunkenness is probably the hardest condition in the world to play without indicating and without uh, uh, illustrating. The thing is to localize one area, and each, each person, if you've ever been tight or almost drunk at all, uh, it's the hardest one also because when we're drunk, we don't know what we're doing. It's hard to be self-observant while you're plastered. If you go for one area of your body that is out of control, as one of the most suggestible to me when I'm standing, is my knees. To allow them, uh, in other words, to give in to the desire, uh, to, to the fact that they feel wobbly. In other words, to give in to them, but then try to control it. You follow? You don't want to be, in other words, what most actors do are most... Uh, people who play drunks is that they want to be out of control you see now if you're trying to get ahead and your knees go you want to straighten up then your head then your head starts to carry you back right no, but you want the head to be straight so there's continuously finding the vulnerability and overcoming it 
with a desire to do it correct. When you sit, it's usually your head that wants to go, that you try to keep straight, you know, and then the attempt for, for normals, I didn't even do that on purpose, uh, and the attempt to, to get, and to focus, you see, to get to the right place for this, make sure that that's your cigarette, you know, so that the, the, uh, the attempt is for normals. We can't control the external obstacles, but we can control our own achievements and preserve our own dignity. So don't wait decades to believe in yourself. Don't be afraid to use your voice and ask for what you want and question those who say no. Be bold. Don't be afraid to express your opinions and don't be afraid of being afraid because it's natural. I often experience it myself. But always keep your mind open. Be generous of heart and spirit. And don't apologize for any of it.